Hello, John. Welcome to the Buck uh, interview. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, you've just published this book, um, which is called Frustrating Flowers and Puzzling Plants. Um, and I'd like to talk a bit about that. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the book, could you tell us a little about your background and when your interest in botany began? I imagine it's uh, similar to yours, Jonathan, and, and lots of botanists. Is, I don't actually remember not being a botanist. Is my, many of my earliest memories are of, of plants rather than people and places. I said they're often linked, aren't they? So I can remember finding plants in particular locations as a kid, and it kind of scares me almost that I can still go straight back to the site from 30, 40 years ago and go straight back to the plant where I remember sort of seeing it. And not a surprise that that was my favourite subject at school and I went on to do a, a degree in plant biology at Newcastle and, and I've had a, a career in, in plants ever since. Well, you're absolutely right. That's not not a million miles from, from my story as well. So thanks a lot. Um, OK, then, uh, for people that haven't come across this book yet, um, what is the book about? Well, anybody who's spent any time looking at plants will know that you, you've got a, a, a flora and lots of the plants in there are just relatively straightforward. You, you, you're going to learn things like a daisy and a nettle uh, without a, a much problem. And then there'll be other groups that are just much more difficult. And you come across these quite early on, possibly the, sort of the dandelion family. Well, not just dandelions, but the, sort of the wider group of, of, of yellow composites. Uh, and you get as much guidance in a standard flora for how to identify a daisy as you do to pull apart the sort of tricky ones. So you get no more help with the tricky ones than you do with the easy ones. So that was at the heart of uh of why i thought there was a need and sort of a few years ago now uh, i think you you might have even been there when we were on the uh, bsbi committee of uh, education and training committee and we produced a matrix of sort of training materials that were available for botanists at different stages and and they're all wildflower books that's sort of their introductory ones and and then there are sort of bsbi guides of handbooks and then the stace and things like that and th there appears just to be a bit of a gap in between sort of here are some nice pictures of wildflowers sometimes sort of sorted by color uh, and it's not a full list of all the british species and it's just a general introduction and then you jump from that to a bsbi handbook or stace which is sort of speaking a language all of its own and is completely impenetrable to sort of most members of the public so there's there's no easy introduction to that complexity. So frustrating plants, uh, frustrating flowers and puzzling plants is is to to bridge that gap. And I sometimes describe it as a gateway drug to sort of uh, hardcore botany. So it's a gentle introduction, and might, that might be as far as you want to go. But it's a way of hooking people into the the interest in. Sort of complexity that's in there so it not just sort of describes why things are complex it focuses on what particular features you might want to concentrate on for this particular group of complex plants and it also has a little bit of debate about why you why you might want to do it and do you want to do it because not all botanists go to that level of resolution on on every group of plants so we, we all have our own reasons for the level of resolution that we go to with with different groups of plants so there's there's some of that in there as well which i don't think you'll find in most floras thanks that's great thank you very much um okay so so next question um which follows directly from that is how did you go about choosing which plants to include and which to leave out so which were the most puzzling the most frustrating and which did you decide uh, either they weren't particularly puzzling or frustrating or maybe that's for another book yeah well that's a, that's a really good question and that there's no perfect answer to that one so it's a, a bit of a pragmatic sort of solution i think so even within complexity there are some groups that are regarded as real horrors and others which some people wouldn't say are that complex at all 
and sometimes that relates to the biology of the plant and sometimes it just relates to the idiosyncrasies of the botanist so we probably have all all have groups of plants that we say i don't do those they're not one of mine i'm saving those for a rainy day i'm saving those for when i retire or when i've when i've got a good summer with a bit of spare time i'm going to sort of pick up that group and look at it and, and it might not be sort of uh, to do with the complexity of the plant it might just be uh, the other botanists that you've come across and, and which ones you sort of particularly sort of like so i've tried to include a range of different levels of complexity and that will include my own idiosyncrasies it might also include my dad so sort of purple vetches for example i'm not so sure that everybody thinks that purple vetches are a particularly complicated group but my dad i know struggles with purple vetches so i put that in and why to leave out there are, well there probably are one or two things that have left out and other people say why didn't you include the i mean the obvious ones are the sort of grasses and sedges and I think that the two of us had that discussion early on when we were sort of talking about the, the need for writing this and, and, and you've been sort of helping throughout with that. And we thought that, that grasses and sedges were probably for another volume. And if this one sort of takes off and there's a, a market for it, then perhaps the two of us can get together because I think probably you're going to be much sort of better at writing the grasses and sedges uh, follow on than I would be yeah okay yes that definitely po ac fan here thanks john that 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 was that was great um so again leading on um the original illustrations which are by you uh, are a particular and i think lovely feature of, of this book um similarly then how did you decide on the illustrations so i i think pretty much everything is illustrated um you can comment on that but i know some of them are in color some of them are in black and white some are line drawings so what kind of decisions um did you um come to about the illustrations well one of the features of the book is that it does go about identifying the different groups in different ways so it will say for this particular group these are the features that you need to look at and so i've tried to instead of illustrating the entire plant just illustrate the part which or parts uh, which i thought was most helpful in unraveling the complexity with that particular group and i went for illustrations rather than photographs because i think most of botanists have, would agree that uh, well if you've sort of spent any time sort of looking at plants that illustrations are more helpful than photographs if you come into it sort of fresh you might think that photographs are the way forward but when you're uh, producing a, a an illustration you can not just get the feature that you're interested in but you can draw it in exactly the position that you want which is much more difficult to do with, with a photograph and the color one is interesting is that when you are uh, coming to do a colored illustration you can photography is just a, so much easier these days than it used to be when when we were just knob at a seedling uh, in the old days sort of film was precious and and you were careful in in how many images you took and these days you can just shoot off hundreds of digital images and you can look at them instantly so you've got the picture in front of you on your your camera or your phone or whatever and it's right next to the plant that you're looking at and you realize that although the image might be perfect the color is completely different to the, the the real flower that's in front of you so you've just taken this picture and you're looking at an image and it's the, the colors are not sort of represented and that applies also to uh to watercolor so that the illustrations are a mixture of uh line drawings and, and watercolor so I've, I've usually done a sort of a, a line drawing and then watercolored in the detail and i'm aware that the color is very difficult to get accurate and then you've got to go through the printing process and i've not seen a hard copy of the the book at this stage so i don't know uh what the the printing quality is going to be like i'm uh, every confidence in the printer uh but you know that it, it will change again so i i would have in some ways preferred to avoid that complexity of the color 
However, coloured images are just nice, aren't they? There's something about floras that the, the, a, a coloured picture is a nice thing. So as well as it being a sort of helpful book, I'd also like to think that it's a nice book, a beautiful book. So lots of the, one of the floras I grew up with is Kebble Martin. And Kebble Martin is a beautifully illustrated flora. They're just fabulous things. Uh, and so, the, yeah, I was I was pulled into to, to more coloured illustrations than were probably necessary, just because they're nice. I also like this little link with Kebble Martin because I don't know if you're aware, he was the vicar in Waffondern, which is the village that I grew up in. And so there's a Kebble Martin way just down the road from where I grew up. So I kind of like the idea that there are two floras out of Waffondern. That's lovely, John. Yes, I, I didn't know that. Um, it says um, in the we... front, he was in several northern mining villages. So it doesn't actually say Waffondern, and it says several northern mining villages. But one of them was Waffondern, yeah. and there is a Kebble Martin way in the middle of Waff. Brilliant. Well, we've been talking about your book. Of course, we will talk about Buck later, Botanical University Challenge. And I remember at, at the first Botany Festival in Nottingham, you um, you handed out some of the images. And if I if I remember rightly, I have my examples here that I took. But the ones that I took, uh, you may remember, were speedwells, because I find I, I actually always think of speedwells as being um, watercolours in themselves because the colours are like they've actually been painted on by some flower fairy um let me get them up the right way so yeah so there's um so so i've got these which i'm i'm thinking how to how to best present them but you generously gave away a lot of the original illustrations maybe even all of them and um, when did you get interested in 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 botanical illustration again it's something that i can't remember starting i've always done it and way back when I was an undergrad at Newcastle uh, something that doesn't really happen anymore is that I had a viva at the end of my degree so the external examiner came in and we had a chat and I remember chatting about two things one was the species concept which is entirely relevant to frustrating flowers and the other one was watercolour illustrations because he'd gone through a, a amount of my undergraduate work and I think I must have illustrated various essays and assignments and things with watercolours uh, and that, yeah, it was taken by my illustrations even then. So we spent uh, at least half the Viva talking about watercolour painting. <laughs> Fantastic. And and probably I was better at it then than I am now because as you get old, uh, the eyes start to fail and I've not got them here, but I had to put clip-ons on top of the glasses Whereas, yeah, in the old days, I didn't need glasses and the resolution was so much better. Um, yes, yeah, so for the um, second Botany Festival, which we're planning in Oxford, we are thinking about having a session on botanical illustration. And I've got another question. Um, I was quite good at art at school, but I wouldn't consider myself good at botanical illustration. I think it's because I d I'm not prepared to put the time. Well, it's not that I'm not prepared. I don't put the time into the little things that you need to bear in mind to make something look like it is. So often mm -hmm. my botanical drawings are kind of all, all skew with. Have you got a couple of hints for students who, who feel they're really bad at uh, this and would like to be better? I don't know that I'm really the right person to, <laughs> okay. to ask, because I, I did do uh, art at school and absolutely hated it because you'd be surprised to hear that what I did was botanical illustration. And the art teacher said, you're going to fail your exam if you do that. I said, but this is what I want to draw. So he said, no, 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 you've got to draw like this. So for my art exam at school, I actually did a plant. It was campion seeds, but they were more abstracted uh, and sort of less like an illustration and more like a piece of art. And the art teacher said, that's wonderful. That's great. And I said, I really don't like it. <laughs> so the, the, the formal bit of art teaching that I got was possibly a bit of use but it's so so far back yeah. uh, and so I've kind of learnt it myself and I, I'm not right. really sure but what I would say is that it's I think it's one of the strengths of the book is having done the illustration and the text is because quite a lot of floras that are out there they are written by one person and the illustrations are done yes. by another one and I'm not going to sort of point the finger at any in particular, 
But when you start to do this for yourself and you're writing the text and you're looking at the plant and you're drawing it and referring back to other floras, there's quite a lot of errors in the illustrations in some other floras, which really surprised me. And I think that's because the botanical illustrators, some of them are artists first rather than botanists. So they're trying to capture the essence of it rather than the accuracy. So there are odd little things where tendrils appear where they shouldn't do or tendrils appear out of the wrong part of the plant. Uh, and you just think, have they not looked at this plant? So if I forgot one sort of message, it is just absolutely look at the plant and familiarise yourself with it and draw what you see and not what you imagine that you see. That's brilliant. Thank, thanks, John. Thanks. OK, uh, next question is sort of about the production process of the book. So what helped or hindered you most when, when writing this book? That's possibly just going over the same ground in a way is that what hindered me most is my failing eyesight. <laughs> uh, and I, I think it's been said before, hasn't it, about sort of taxonomists and sort of uh, you don't get into it until you're, you're quite late in your years. So I don't think I could have written this book as a younger person because I don't think I would have had the understanding and I don't think I would have had the feel and I don't think I would have had the confidence to have tackled it. So it's a better book because I've got the years of botanizing and experience, but it's also a less good book because my eyes are not what they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, OK, the next question is, um, uh, who is the target audience for frustrating flowers and puzzling plants? Well, hopefully there are two and that might be sort of unrealistic to expect there to be, be two. So the first audience that sort of it was identified for in the first place is there are a group of people who are interested in plants and have never got beyond that wildflower book. So lots of middle class families have a wildflower book and they pick it up and they very quickly get frustrated. So the original intention it was for people like that who've never got beyond the easy ones because they are uh, because yeah because there's just not that help available and it's not accessible as soon as you get into the more complicated sort of floras but the other potential audience is that lots of us have one or two bsbi handbooks of these complex groups and you don't want to take them to the fields because they just cover one group and they are probably in more detail than you need so lots of more experienced botanists will just know the easy ones but need a bit of a prompt with the more complex ones or have that group that I mentioned earlier that they've just not got round to. So it's a, a, it's a way into that, sort of, that group that you've always meant to get round to but you've never sort of bumped into somebody who's a group specialist or you've just never found the time. Uh, and hopefully it's just an easy way into these complex groups for the people who've just parked one or two of them as well as people who've just a, 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 a novice botanist just getting into plants for the first time that's great so yeah so so that leads to dr m's confession time so the family for me that i'm most looking forward to to trying with this book is brassicaceae it's the brassicaceae that I, i'm looking forward to to trying out and it's it's a family you see quite a lot of around OK, John, so as I said, we've been talking about your book. Uh, we're also now going to talk about Buck Botanical University Challenge. Um, how does um, Frustrating Flowers, Puzzling Plants relate to Botanical University Challenge? What I could say there is I think both of them are part of a wider movement in botany that just wasn't there when we when we were sort of younger botanists and you could extend that to the work that people like josh styles are doing with reintroducing plants is that in the old days we just expected people to learn their botany more or less by themselves without much in the way of support and that we didn't think it was appropriate to be reintroducing plants plants looked after themselves and now we've realized that plants are in decline and that botany is in decline and if we don't do something about both of them then we're going to be in a in a bit of a mess so we're, we're now much more proactive in 
trying to establish plants back in the wild and manage habitats and reintroduce them but we're also much more concerned in supporting of novice botanists and people getting into plants in the first place so botanical university challenge is all about that it's about supporting uh, early career botanists people getting into it putting them in connection with each other and asking them tricky questions getting them to to improve their botanical skills and frustrating flowers and puzzling plants is is doing the same thing hopefully it's providing support and help and guidance to people sort of moving along their sort of their own journey of botanical discovery thanks john that's great obviously at the moment we're, we're now um october 2023 we're we're planning to to promote botanical university challenge 2024 so we're looking to recruit teams that have played before and, and new teams uh, we're also looking to get sufficient funding to be able to support another botany festival so in the same vein uh, can i ask you how are, are you planning to promote this book so that it reaches that those target audiences well the the publisher have, uh, have got a publicist and they've been working very hard sending out sort of copies to various organizations and publications and uh, I'm, I suppose I'm looking forward to, to those reviews appearing in press and, uh, and, and on social media and hearing what sort of other people sort of think of it and they, they get to sort of try it out for themselves. I should say most of the chapters, all of the chapters have been sort of field trialed by sort of botanists so I've had an awful lot of help and support uh, in, in writing this so sort of group specialists have helped and sort of novice botanists have helped ticking out sort of various chapters and trying them uh, but still yeah that that will be important I think in in promoting it seeing what uh, how well it's received and what people think of it uh, I'll also be uh, like yourself at the at the Botanical Society conference in uh, in December talking about the the book and uh, already given a number of talks on it so I think that, that, that that's likely to continue that if if I'm invited places then I'll be there um um, okay, talking about Botanical University Challenge, one of the features of the, the quiz in Botanical University Challenge is that we have questions uh, on plants. Do you see your book as a, your book as opposed to Buck, <laughs> your book as a potential source of questions for Buck? Yeah, I would like to think so. Uh, we obviously have some straight botanical questions in there, but one of the things that I've tried to include, and we, we almost sort of uh, ventured into earlier was education and, and teaching people about plants and one of the things that I think we tend to overlook is that the importance of an experienced botanist going for a walk and showing you but not just showing you telling you stories and those stories sometimes turn out to be nonsense but they are a little hook that's of that you 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 remember and it helps you identify that plant because you've got that little story so for example i remember back in my newcastle days john richards telling a story about oh and anthony uh, hemlock water dropwort and he told this story about these hippies who misidentified it and then all poisoned themselves and the entire year of botanists wrongly learned the scientific name for oenanthe as hippie killer because it very quickly mutates from hippie killer to hippie killer which actually sounds like a scientific name so for years i had to struggle with sort of learning <laughs> that the scientific name wasn't hippie killer so it's little so that's not sort of likely to turn up as a sort of botanical university challenge <laughs> story but there are little anecdotes and little asides and little curiosities uh, yeah. that are included in this flora that i think are important in many of us learning our plants many of us have little jokes and little asides and you don't normally get any of that in a wildflower book so i've tried to include at least some of those and some of them might just turn up as botanical university challenge questions brilliant brilliant i absolutely agree plants are, are nothing without their stories um okay there is one last question 
Um, we're on the last question now, um, and it's one that you're not prepared for, uh, although you might be. So the last question, John, if Botanical University Challenge was a plant, which plant would it be? Ooh, is it going to be prickly? <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, it's probably a bramble. They're definitely in the book. And brambles are horribly complicated. Uh, they are, yeah, they're definitely prickly. Uh, but they're also absolutely sort of lovely to eat and lovely to turn into wine and lovely to make into jam. So Botanical University Challenge is both rewarding and prickly at the same time, I think. And complex. Challenging and rewarding. Complex. complexity, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, John. That was great. Um, look forward to hearing more about your, your book. And indeed, uh, I'm sure we'll see copies of your book at Botanic University Challenge uh, 2024, um, particularly the, the Oxford uh, Festival. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.